fierce as always. You remind me of a rose with thorns, princess. Oh my god! Does he have a thing for like like when women like step all over him? Is that his thing? <laughs> Hey internet, it's Jessica and welcome back to Cinderella Phenomenon. So today I'm going to be starting Rumpel's route, which is the route I was supposed to do before Rod's, but fuck it. Anyway, he has the Rumpelstiltskin curse, so I think his is very interesting because he doesn't even remember who the hell he is. So I'm really looking forward to see how his route will turn out. Uh, but before we get started, if you guys would like to check out the game yourself, there's a link in the description where you can download it for free. And if you would like to check out my Let's Play for Karma or Rod's Root, there's a link for the playlist for there as well. Okay, let's get started. Now we are gonna finally start Rumble's Root. I suppose I can ask Rumble. Enough girls seem to like him, so he might have some sound advice. Really? That's that's what you think? <laughs> That's the one thing that this looks like, yeah, he probably can help me because he's good with the ladies. Like, what? I found Rumpel between his orders and pull him aside. He looks oddly relieved. Ah, princess, you saved me. Save you? From the hideous overload of work. I'm pretty sure Rumpel does less around here than me. At least I finished the work I am given. Unlike Rumpel, who gets distracted by every single thing. Dear Lucette, if you called me here, then you must want to confess something to me. What? Perhaps you'll confess your undying love to me? I scowled and crossed my arms. I came to ask for your advice, but perhaps I'll go and ask someone else. You came to ask for my advice? Rumble stares at me, clearly shocked. I guess it was because out of all the people I would ask, he would probably seem like the least likely. I will assist you, my sweet princess. <laughs> God damn it! When he, when he does the glaring thing with his glasses, it makes me laugh. What kind of advice are you looking for? Perhaps you would like to learn how to make a man, how to make a man swoon, or to uh, stroke the embers of the heart oh my god because <laughs> at least karma is like charming this guy is just obnoxious <laughs> is flirting the only thing on his mind i came here because i want you to teach me about goodness goodness but my sweet all the advice that i suggested would give you would teach you just that being romantic will not teach me how to be good rumble distractedly placed his hand over his heart but being romantic is good don't you see the smiles in the lovely ladies faces when i speak with them I cannot imagine why they would smile like that. Rumble's persistence is annoying. To be romantic and loving, that is the epitome of goodness. Show someone affection and they will return it in two folds. I can only stare at Rumble as I wonder why I even decided to ask him. Or you could just be kind. Everyone is kind in their own way, princess. So what do you say? Perhaps you would like to practice on me? I'm sure your smile would brighten up my week. No, I'm certain of it. I have to work. I quickly turn and leave before Rumble could continue. If I have to be romantic to earn a good deed, I'd rather be cursed like this forever. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Lucid's like, yeah, totally Lucid's like that kind of person, but Jesus. <laughs> I find Rumble taking a break out of one of the tables. Surprisingly, he is by himself, and not surrounded by the usual blushing ladies. You are not surrounded by a flock of ladies? You must have done something to offend them. Rumble looks at me, the surprise apparent on his face. Princess, have you come to mend my broken heart? Excuse me? I was speaking with a lady here only hours ago when she told me that she was betrothed to someone else. That happened hours ago and you're still sitting here? Rumble placed a hand on his chin and palm of his hand, tired, looking very tired. In the morning, the heart is a fragile thing, princess. <laughs> Won't you help heal my shattered heart? Rumble stares at me when I do not answer. That would count as a good deed, you know. Helping you would count as a good deed. Doing things out of kindness of your heart is a good deed, princess. The kindness of my heart? Why would I want to help you when you've done nothing for me? Ooh, you set. Still like that. Kindness isn't a thing that needs necessarily to be returned, princess. Single instances of affection can make a heart lighter. Why does he sound like he goes to the troll making his words sound much more fancier? I will not help you mend your broken heart because that would be an act of stupidity, not kindness. Rumple's shoulders slump as he frowns. Ah, now my heart is even more fragmented. You suffer from a broken heart every day you are rejected. Of course, because to pour your heart out to someone only to be rejected is a cruel fate, princess. You probably deserve the rejection with the way you flirt with everyone. So no, I am not going to help you. Deal with your own broken heart. I turn around and walk away. The act Rumble puts on is annoying. Rumble is like extra. Like I want to call him annoying. He's just really extra for no reason. <laughs> I do not know why the first person that popped into my mind was Rumple. Just because he puts on a smile on the ladies' faces with his flirting does not mean he can help you do a good deed. And yet, here I am. I find Rumple on break, surrounded by a few giggling ladies. 
His hand makes a dramatic sweeping gesture as he showers them with the compliments. And you, my sweet, are like sunshine peeking through the clouds on a dark day. Good God, this guy is doing pickup lines right now. <laughs> you litter the ground with so much golden light and make every flower reach out towards your warmth. On second thought, maybe I should reconsider. Princess! Rumpel notices me, however, and immediately waves me over. Turn and walk away, walk towards him. Okay, so I was reading the comments on, um... The final video for Rodstreet, and people were telling me that Rumple likes w likes it when Lucette is mean to him. So I'm gonna try try it if it works. Turn away and walk away. I just remember that I have something to do. When I turn, I start walking away, but I I'm, I am immediately stopped when I feel Rumple's hand on my shoulder. I slap his hand away. Fierce as always. You remind me of a rose with thorns, princess. Oh my god! Does he have a thing for like like when women like step all over him? <laughs> Oh god. He leans closer and winks at me. But the thorns are what makes the rose so <laughs> He does. Shit. Are you always so persistent or do you actually want me to slap you again? Your slapping me is but a small blockage in the road. I will never give up on you, princess. Does he enjoy it when I purposely try to ignore him? The most brilliant sparkling gems are buried deep within the ground and take much more effort to unearth. What? Princess, you are like one of those gems. No, I'm not like a gem. Rumpel, why would you deal with someone like her? What? Lucette is like a budding flower, and I want to do my best to help her bloom into whatever way I can. You've come for, to, you come for me to advice, right? How did you know? The look of shock on your face is adorable and so absolutely satisfying. It seems like I hit the nail right on the head. A Rumpel, she's obviously too stubborn to admit that she needs your help. This woman is so infuriating. Whoa! <laughs> Already! This guy's too close! Rumpel leans in a little closer to me and suddenly he is whispering in my ear. Let me tell you something, princess. Making a person happy just to see them smile is definitely a good deed. Huh? Making someone feel important is never a, dis a disservice. What do you think? I'm pretty acknowledgeable, aren't I? All he ever talks about is dotting people, flirting with them, and making them smile. Rumpel continues talking. Which is why I will make an excellent partner. I take a step back. Rumpel is now looking at me with a triumphant smile. How did you- I'm very perceptive, princess. You overheard my conversation with Parfait. She told me about it. She- did? Only briefly. So you're not perceptive at all. Princess, you can't see it, but I am drowning in my own tears. <laughs> he has just assumed that I was going to be partners with him, which is what- which is very annoying. I do not know why I was considered partnering up with Rumpel when he says this, when he says the same thing over and over again, and I do not think I could be around him all day, in and out. Oh my, what did I spot here? Dolora appears before us, a sly smile on her face. Slacking off, you two. I'm on a break. That break ended about five minutes ago, Rumpel. And Princess, I think there's a broom that needs attending. Fine. There's no use in complaining, and then I would rather get away from Rumpel. Rumpel turns to the ladies and smiles. My lovely ladies, I will be back later, and I promise that we will continue our conversation without any interruptions. Oh, and Princess? We'll continue our conversation later as well. <laughs> oh my god. I walk up before Rumble can shower more of his compliments onto me. Making a person happy just to see them smile. Can such a thing really be considered a good deed? The days at the tavern go by quickly over the next week. Um, Princess? Princess? You've been staring off into space. I was just thinking. I just finished using Mr. Broom and now I'm helping Anise sort some some of the shelves in the back. Rumpel has taken the serving for today. The women always enjoy him, but the men are always glaring at him. They're jealous of Rumpel, I think. Who? The other men. Anise looks over at the men that glaring at Rumpel as he as he drifts between tables. I'm worried about Rumpel too. What are you talking about? You were looking at Rumble with a funny expression on your face. No, I wasn't. My words are clipped and my voice is cold. Anise looks at me sadly, but I do not care. What I do is none of her business. I think the girls are jealous of you too. What? I glance around the tavern and notice that the girls are glowering at me. I'm not unaccustomed to these glares since people have always looked at me this way. During the times I left the palace, people gave me the same looks, but the this feels different somehow. Why would they be jealous? Because Rumpel likes you. <laughs> because you're Rumpel's partner. I'm not his partner. 
You're not? He's been telling everyone that you are. Oh my god, he's already gloating. <laughs> I never agreed to be being partners with him. I felt your longing gaze upon my backs, and I arrived, my princess. Rumpel suddenly appears before the two of us, smiling brightly. I suddenly have a strong urge to slap the smile right off his face. <laughs> god. <laughs> we are not partners. But princess, you asked for my advice. Advice is what I gave you because I care. No one else cares as much about you as I. And so, I proclaim both of us to be partners, because we are a match made in heaven. And you're so overwhelmed with gratitude that you're lost for words. If I could throw something at you, I would. A punch packed with much strength as your life. <laughs> Rumble needs to stop, oh my god. I can only groan in response. Oh my! Hello everyone, it sounds like you're having fun. How is this fun? Rumble is never fun. All he ever does is spout nonsense. He doesn't mean any harm, princess. He's just filled to the brim with compliments, and he needs to get some of them off his chest. Well, he can go direct them at one of the, his many ad other adoring fans. I ship my gaze to Rumble and furl my eyebrows at him. Or do you not only direct them to me because you enjoy how much I ignore you? I only want to help you, princess. That's what partners do, right? But we're not partners. Just try this partnership out, princess. I promise it'll be worth your while. Nothing ventured, nothing gained, princess. You can always change partners. Lady Parfait, you broke my heart! You're very good at healing your broken heart by now, Rumple. Anyway, I'm very sorry to interrupt. I only need to speak with Denise to make sure that she doesn't need any help with a particular list. A list? A, a list of herbs for, um, for me. Anissa has been nice enough to gather some herbs for me. Lady Parfait, is this about your body? Oh, please don't get creepy, Rumple. Please, I like you. Don't get creepy. What's wrong with your body? It's nothing you can concern yourself with, Princess. My body is just a little frail because of the burden on it. That's right, Parfait mentioned having to bear the crystal and Lucis. A thought occurs to me as I look more closely. Wait, could you use your magic to heal yourself? Parfait shakes her head and sighs. I don't have the ability to heal. None of us do, except for one particular witch who calls herself the Witch Doctor. Witch Doctor? Is something wrong? Rumple shakes his head and gives a wistful smile. Hmm, that name just sounds familiar. Ooh, maybe it's the person who cur cursed him, right? It's likely you heard about her from somewhere else before. Humans do, do know of her existence after all. A witch? She's not a fairy. For some reason, I thought the fairies would be more likely to heal people, not witches. She is indeed a witch, that is what they say. Though, I have never met her myself. She's the only one who can heal illnesses with magic. She doesn't associate with other witches, though, and keeps to herself. Nobody has known where she's from for a long time. Suffice it to say, we could never seek out help from her, even if we wanted to? Parfait shakes her head. No, unfortunately not. Rumple looks grim, but Parfait quickly dissipates into a gloomy atmosphere with a clap of her hands. If Delora was here, she would say, All right, story time is over. That was very interesting. Interesting, but doesn't really help anyone. Your body is the way that it is because of the Great War, then? Like I told you before, the Great War has made my body a lot weaker. This is something that cannot be healed, and I don't ha I don't have an heir, so... Parfait looks about ready to say something, but goes silent. She has a sad look on her face, and I don't understand why. Anise immediately speaks up. I think I'll be okay, Lady Parfait. I was actually going to go on an errand run in a few minutes. Do you need any help? I would be more than happy to escort a lovely lady like yourself around town. Anise pulls the list out from her bag nearby as she holds it out. There's only a few items on the list as far as I can see. Don't worry about it, Rumple. It's not that much at all. Rumple stares at the list. His expression suddenly smooths into something more serious. May I have that? Anise hands him the list and slowly takes the pen out from the po his pocket. I stare and look over at his list quietly, and then scribble some things down at the bottom. Afterwards, he hands it over to Anise. I've added some things that might be helpful. The herbs on the list are for joint pains, and you might want something a little more general. How does he know all of that? Everyone is staring at Rumple with wide eyes. Even Parfait looks impressed. You've used herbs before, Rumple? Maybe. I don't remember. But for some reason, names came to me at the top of my head I was looking at the list. Thank you! It is always my pleasure to help out a lovely lady. Now, Anise, please let me accompany you to town. I would love to help you whatever I can, and more names might come to me. That sounds nice. Thank you, Rumple. Rumple turns to me, a mischief smile on his face. 
Whenever he looks at me like that, I know he's gonna suggest something ridiculous. Princess Lucette should accompany us for the experience. I do not need experience. How are you going to shower people with compliments if you know nothing about them? Being out in the town will be good for you. Rumpel has a point. The more you expand your world, the more you're willing to learn more about people. Do not need to be lectured. Oh, Princess, it wasn't meant to be a lecture. I'm just letting you know that the experience is invaluable. Come on, Princess, let us escort the lovely Anise around town. What about your work? Rumpel puts a finger to my lips and grins. No one seems to have a thought about that, so it'll be our little secret. He, he said it right in front of Parfait, by the way. <laughs> I slapped his hand away, but he he just grins at me jovially. How did I get dragged into this? Please don't stay out too long. We won't. I made my way into town with Rumpel and Anise. The majority of the conversations we have are one-sided, with Rumpel giving us both the usual compliments. He's never seems to be tired of it. Rumpel helps Anise pick up certain herbs and a few other medications, and accepts all compliments when she gives him the triumphant smile. I know Anise knows about the herbs because she helped him before, but how does Rumpel know so much about them? This must be part of his past he doesn't remember. Maybe he's a doctor. That'd be like really funny if he was. Anise answers the store by herself at one point, leaving me alone with Rumpel. I'm a mysterious man, aren't I? <laughs> I looked at him and I noticed the easy smile adoring on his face. A man with amnesia is full of secrets, after all. I bet you're even more curious about me. Women always love mi a mysterious man. I do not particularly care. But Princess, if my curse is amnesia, then shouldn't you care somehow? As partners, we're going to help each other, right? Do not see how I can help you with your amnesia. Huh, maybe the spell is the only way to broke by true love kiss? Shall we see? Oh god, no! Ruffle! Mm. If people don't want it, you can't just freaking go up to people and be like, Oh, kiss me, you know what I mean? Like, god damn it, this guy. He leans towards me with a playful smile on his face. I get accustomed to this behavior by now, but but this does not faze me. I'm really sorry at his nonsense. You already said it yourself, that you need to gather entries from some kind of journal. Ah, oh, princess, you're no fun. A little kiss wouldn't hurt anyone. I would die before I kiss you. <laughs> princess, that's so sad. He says that, but he's still smiling. Why is he so unfazed by everything I say to him? You only ever have a terrible suggestions. It is a mistake to trust you might have good advice. But I have great ideas. You haven't helped with my curse at all. I have been trying though. You haven't even told me how to get good deed. I told you before, princess. Compliment makes a person happy. And making a person happy is a good deed. So you flirting with women and using shallow compliments on them is a good deed? On the surface, the compliments may seem shallow. But if you swim a little deeper, complimenting people cannot be a good deed. But making them happy is! All you need to do is listen to people, sympathize with them, maybe get to know them, and you can make them happy by doing even smaller things for them. Women enjoy compliments, princess. Besides, how can I say such beauties and not compliment them? It would be a disservice. You give compliments to people who, don't, who do not even care about it. Princess? Rumpel's voice trails off and he stares past me. His smile falters for a few moments and then looks confused at Rumpel in his features. I turn to follow his gaze and see a small boy staring at us. He is shyly hiding from behind some kind of notebook. What? There's a seriousness again. It's the same thing that happened when he added something on the list of Parfait. Then suddenly the expression changed into Rumpel's usual bright smile. Hello there! Would you like to come and speak with us, young sir? You don't remember me, sir? Uh, oh? Do I know you? I used to come by- OH I WAS RIGHT! I, HE'S A DOCTOR! SHIT! I used to come by to your clinic? You saved me before! The boy draws closer, still hiding shyly behind his notebook. Uh, I'm sorry little sir, I'm afraid that my memories are a bit scrambled right now. I can't even remember my own name! Really? Where is Anise? Why is she taking so long? The last thing I want to hear is a conversation between Rumpel and some child. Is he gonna shower this boy with compliments too? It's a shame that I can't remember a boy as bright as yourself. And there it is. <laughs> I'm not that bright, sir. Not as bright as you, but I want to be. He holds up his notebook, which has a small name scribbled in the corner. The words, my dreams, are written in the front cover in cursive letters. What's this? I wanted to be like you when I grew up, so I started the book of dreams just like my mom told me to. She said that I could become a doctor too, so as long as I tried my best. A doctor? You forgot you were a doctor, sir? Rumple a doctor? What if this kid knows the, this guy's name if he's like his hero or something? The boy continues to hold up the book and finally Rumple takes it and flips it open to the front page. 
Rumpel is holding the book close to his face and he cannot see it. I rise to the tips of my toes and to attempt to look over his shoulder. At first, Rumpel does not notice me and he stares at the page. Then, blatantly, he realizes that I am there and lowers the book so that I can read too. I lean so close to him that our shoulders brush. My eyes scan over the page quickly. The handwriting is crude but barely readable, readable actually, but I can still make out the gist of it. Rumpel slowly reads out the words out loud. When I am older, I want to be exactly like the kind doctor that saved me when I had no one else to go to. The boy's face flushes as Rumpel reads his words out loud before he, his curious gaze lands on me. I don't remember you. The boy- I looked at the boy, irritated. Are you the doctor's wife? Rumpel suddenly looks up, eyes wide. He looks down at the boy, then at me. His face suddenly solemn. I'm surprised by the words that leave his mouth next. Yes, she is. <laughs> of course you would say that, what the hell? He takes my hand in his and looks down at me, and an almost sad on look on his face. What's wrong with him? Pull my hand away, slap him. Oh dear. I mean, I, he, like I said, he likes it when, when Lucette is mean to him, but I don't know if slapping him is like the right answer in front of the kid. Slap him? Let go of me. Rumpel's eyes cease to with worry as he holds onto my hand tightly. The sadness is in his eyes becomes anxiety, and he sees something like fear dancing within his eyes. You really think it was my fault? Then in his eyes are so vacant, almost that he's looking through me. It's like he's in some sort of trance. The way he looks at me makes my skin crawl. His grip on my hand tightens, making my sh making me shudder. And rather than slap his hand away, I reach out with my free hand and slap his face. I stare, perplexed, at the sudden bafflement on Rumpel's face. Did the slap to the face knock him out of a strange trance? He is being even stranger than normal, and, and the intensity of his look in his eyes is even scaring me. Rumpel stares at me for a few moments, blinking slowly. Oh no, I blinked out. I'm sorry, princess. What just happened to him? Is he just- is it just because he's remembering too much and he's just kind of like blanking out? And like, maybe- maybe when he remembers things, he kind of relives into the moment where he like fucked up and got cursed, and maybe that's what's happening right now? The way he's speaking is so strange, almost like he's in some sort of trance. But I know how people are. They lie and they put on faces. I'm sorry for spacing out. If I invaded your space, then I am sorry. You're apologizing? Rumble puts a hand to his cheek where I slapped him. I think I deserve that. Thanks for getting me out of whatever that was. All at once, the sheepish smile breaks into something cheerful again. He's still smiling at me, even though I was so curt with him. Rumpel is so confusing. The boy looked bewildered. I think he would too. He's like, what the hell's wrong with this guy? <laughs> Don't worry about it, little sir. This one here is a feisty thing. I deserve whatever she just did. So she's not your wife, sir? Rumpel looks at a little surprised and then he laughs. Unfortunately, no. The beautiful lady here is not my wife. Rumpel abs absently rubs the back of his neck and looks up to the sky. I'm not entirely sure what just happened, but it seems like I recovered something very important today, or the beginnings of something important. Something important? Is he talking about a memory? He hands the book back to the boy, then he leans down and sets the hand on the boy's head. A bell chimes behind his as niece comes out of the store, carrying a bag filled with what I assumed in her are herbs and medicine. The boy once again cowered behind his book. Oh, who's this? The wonderful little sir that helped me regain a very important memory. An important memory? Rumpel stands looking triumphant. I, my good lady, am a doctor. <laughs> oh, really? Truly. Rumpel turns back to the boy who asks a few more questions. He even asks the boy's name, but much to his surprise, the boy shakes his head. I'm sure you told me of your name, but I don't remember it. It's like my curse. No one remembers me being a princess, and no one remembers Rumpel's true name. Oh, that's right! That's right! Okay, that's why I was about to say, why isn't he telling him his name? It's part of his curse. Rumpel thanks the boy again many times over, even buys him a few pieces of candy. The, boy I the boy's eyes are practically glowing with excitement, and he doesn't stop from smiling. After we see him off and start to head back to the tavern, I begin to contemplate. I am curious about something. Oh? You said that you need to fill your journal with memories in order to get them back, but the journal you just read wasn't yours. It appears not. It seems that there are three entries that triggered my memory just to need to be written by people I know. Reading them triggers a memory, and then the full entry probably appears in my journal. I ought to check it when I get back. I see. But even without looking into the entry, a memory came into your mind? Rumble gives a short, distracted nod. It's not, a co it's not complete, so I'm hoping that something really has appeared in my journal. It feels like it must considering- It feels like it must considering I remembered something so important. Do you remember anything else at all? Hmm. 
The young man that we just met, I believe he used to come watch me work before? I knew him. He used to look up to me. He was a sweet child. The memory is foggy, but yes, I believe something did happen to him. He became... ill. The details of how I saved him must be in the journal. Even though this does not pertain to my curse, I am curious what his journal might say. I can't remember fully, but the memories feel sad somehow. He turns to me, eyebrows knit together. It is strange to see him with such a serious expression on his face. I'm really sorry about earlier, princess. I think I was on the verge of a memory, but then it got tangled up in my head. I am surprised by his sudden change of topic. I shake my head slowly. He is quiet for a few moments before suddenly he sm his smile comes back and he laughs jovially, telling us that there's no point in worrying. At the town outskirts, I turn, feeling my feeling eyes on my back, but no one is there. Is that Alcaster or like Mythos or something? That's really weird. Anyway, I'm gonna end this episode here. So, um, I got one prediction right that he was a doctor. It's pretty obvious because he knows about herbs and stuff. So that's interesting. I'm I'm wondering what exactly he did to get his curse. M might be related to, to the boy or just not entirely or what he said to uh, Lucette when he was like in his trance. But so far, I, li I like Ripple's curse because it's interesting because we don't we know nothing about him and he can't answer for himself because he remembers nothing. Uh, but yeah, it's good. Anyway, if you guys enjoyed this episode of Cinderella Phenomenon, remember to leave a like, comment, and subscribe to join the companions. And if you would like to support the channel on Patreon, there is a link in the description where you can check it out. You get early access to videos, videos for Patreon only, my Discord server, and a bunch of other stuff. Or if you would like to check out my store, that's another way you can support me. Alright, so we'll return with Cinderella Phenomenon later. I'll see you guys in the next episode. <laughs> Bye! Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh! <laughs> what?! <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> oh my god! Slick wetness between my fingers. <laughs> oh, it's so awkward. I'm glad you're enjoying yourself too. She gauges.